Welcome back to the channel guys. So tonight I'm going to be going over how to set the ignition base timing on your SR20 as well as check your TPS to make sure that it's in the right voltage parameters. Uh, these are two kind of important steps that you want to do if you've swapped an engine in that you got from somebody that you don't know or you did a rebuild or anything like that. So this video is predicated or under the assumption that you've already set your timing correctly so your timing chain is set right and that you stabbed your CAS cam angle sensor correctly. So if you did those two things right, we're gonna continue the video from that point. I will make another video in the future showing how to set those things up, but for now, I'm just gonna show you how to set these things up, assuming that you just got the engine, didn't take it apart, popped it in your car, and you just wanna go over these things. So let's get started. All right, so let's go over some of the tools you're gonna need today. Uh, for my particular car, to loosen the TPS, you're gonna need a flathead screwdriver, but for yours, if you're an S13, SR especially, you're probably gonna need a seven millimeter box in wrench. And then just some conductive wire. You can use a paper clip. Paper clips are actually perfect, but I just had this li wire laying around. So that's what I'm gonna use. Some wire dikes to cut it. And then of course your multimeter. So let's go and do the TPS first. All right guys, so here's our TPS sensor plug. You're gonna locate the middle wire of the three wires that are plugged in, you're gonna locate. In this case, mine is white from wiring specialties. And you're gonna take your little pin and you're gonna insert the pin. So I'll see if I can do this one-handed. I should be able to, but um, just in case I can't, I have to put the camera down. Probably helps if I don't look through the camera. Anyway, okay, so you're gonna have it fastened like that. And the reason why we put a little loop in here is so you can get your lead in there easily and it kind of stays there. So that way you can adjust this. So what we're looking for here well, all we're going to do is we're going to turn the ignition key to the on position, not turn the engine on. We're going to find a ground, in which case this is my grounding point right here. I'm going to ground off my lead, uh, one of my leads, the grounding lead from the multimeter to this. And then I'm going to put my positive here and I'm going to set it to 12 volts to read, um, to actually read 12 volts. So we'll flip this little guy up and turn it all the way down to, let's see, if it'll focus. No, maybe? Yeah, okay, kind of. All right, yeah, we'll just set it to 12 volts, and then we're gonna touch, like I said, the ground to the ground, positive to the middle lead, and we're gonna see if it reads out between 0.5, or excuse me, 0.4 and 0.5 volts. That's where you wanna be when the throttle's closed. So let's go see what we get. All right, so for how tight things are in my car, I have to use this little wrench to get to the um, to get to the screws. They're flathead screws. I would much rather have seven millimeter like the SR. That's easier to get to, but for my case, I just use this little guy with an apex bit at the end. So anyway, we have it set up right now. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, those are already loosened. We're gonna go to the car, just put it to the on position, like I said. So then turn it on, okay. Now, we know that our pin is securely fastened in there. We got our lead, our red lead in there. So now we're gonna go ahead and turn it to 12 volts. And let's see what our reading is. I'm gonna, gra I'm gonna ground it right here. 4.26, now that's actually pretty good. So I wanna be at 0.4, let's see, 0.45. So let's see what we have to do to get that. Now I'm holding the phone right now. Let me put it on the tripod so I can actually show you how I'm uh, maneuvering this thing so it'll show you what happens when I go clockwise and counterclockwise on the multimeter. So let me get this set up. All right, so as you can see, we're reading 0.426. So when I come over here and I adjust this, let's say I go in a clockwise direction, it's going to lower the voltage. And if I go in a counterclockwise direction, direction it's going to raise the voltage. So we want to be at that 0.45 mark. So I just lightly kind of tap on it until it gets me where I want, and I'm gonna leave it there. That is a perfect spot. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and tighten down the screws on the TPS and just make sure that nothing changes here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna need my hands, so um, I'll, I'll cut to when it's, when it's actually tightened.
Now, an important thing to consider is to not actually smoke these things down. You don't want to over tighten them. And with this kind of device, it'll give you a lot of leverage. So you definitely don't want to over tighten anything. It, I mean, remember it would be a seven millimeter screw otherwise. So it's a little difficult. I wish I had a better system for this. Kind of embarrassing. There we go. Anyway, so let's go ahead and check voltage, make sure that it's still good. Should be good still. As long as it's 0.45, I'll be happy. Hey, there we go, right on the money. Well, 0.449. So yeah, now we're good to go. Now, here's something kind of cool, watch this. So we should, when I open the throttle all the way, be experiencing over four volts. Not 0.4, but actually 4.4, 4.5 volts or higher. So check that out. In this particular car, uh, I think on S13 SRs, it might actually go to like uh, 4.45 or something like that. But on this, we're at four volts, and that's good. You want that. So, cool. Now let's go ahead and move on to checking timing. All right, so let's go over the tools that you're gonna need to actually do your ignition timing. So, you're gonna need a 12 millimeter to adjust your cast, and you're gonna need a timing light. Now, I wanna talk about this a little bit, because it's kind of important. Um, a lot of people, I'm sure there's gonna be people screaming in the comments, but that's okay, because Hopefully we can educate each other, but here's the dealio. This is a standard timing light, all right? Why am I using a standard timing light? There are other timing lights out there that have dials on them that'll give you the different degrees and all that other jazz, and some will have plugs and everything. This is an induction type, so it's got a little induction clamp on it. So the way this works is that this induction creates a field, and when your coil pack is when there's a pulse of electricity sent to your coil pack, it disrupts that field and it sends a signal to this light to activate. So <clears throat> there's a lot of conjecture out there regarding these and everything else. Now, I will say for newer type vehicles, if you're buying a timing light specifically to do this car, you do not have to go out and get an expensive timing setup. Um, this was 45 bucks from AutoZone. It's a great one. I think Harbor Freight has one. Those are kind of hit or miss. But this one works really good. It's super simple, it's reliable. It'll last you for years. Um, so the way it works for our SRs is that this will clamp over the number one cylinder. And I'll show you how that works. And it'll clamp over number one cylinder uh, wires that are going to the coil pack. And then these, this will clamp obviously to a positive constant, 12 volt, so your battery. In my case, it's gonna be the relocation terminal and then a ground, okay? And it's real simple. You just press this button to activate the light and it's gonna take the signal from here and it's gonna activate the light and you're gonna point this towards your crankshaft. And thanks to the Nissan engineers, they actually gave us multiple degrees of measurement on the damper and the, uh, or the, um, the crankshaft pulley, as I mentioned earlier in the intro. Why is that important? Well, it lets us use a standard light like this. So on newer model cars and some different types of cars, they typically have one notch in the crank and they'll have one little pointer that sticks out and you have to line that one notch up with that pointer. So you'll need a variable, uh, a variable degree um, timing light. In this case, since we have those different notches that come in five degree increments, we don't have to use a really fancy timing light because we're just gonna adjust it based off the, the crank's preset uh, degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and get going on this, show you how this works. It's really simple, please don't be afraid of it. A lot of people are, and a lot of people are running cars with improper timing, so let's get to it. All right, so let's go ahead and install the timing light. I'm just gonna show you real quick. I'm gonna take it right back off because it's like 40 degrees Fahrenheit here in Texas, a little cold in Texas. So I'm gonna have to let the car warm up. It's very important that the car is at operating temperature before you set your timing because you're gonna to have to end up removing your TPS in order to get the car to run in a sufficient mode to actually time the car. So you want the car running at operating temperature already. So that's what I'm gonna to have to do. But I'm just gonna show you how to set it up real quick while there's no noise going on. So here's your number one. You're gonna hook this bad boy up. And see, <clears throat> with SRs, we don't have any crazy shielding like RF shielding or heavy insulated wires, just standard wires. And that's very easy for this induction type clamp to pick up. A lot of the modern newer cars, they'll have really thick insulation and, and stuff like that. It makes it quite difficult for these clamps to pick up. And that's when you'd use a plug style. Anyway, so then you'll just take your ground clamp 
get it over to a ground. That's my ground. Since I have a battery relocation, um, your battery would be here, so you just hook it up to your positive and negative um, or your ground and all that. But then I have this little terminal block right here. So I'm going to hook my <clears throat> positive to that. You're going to hear it kind of kick on right now, but there's no signal to it. So it's just kind of, you know, doing nothing right now. Press the button. Nothing's going to happen. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get this thing started, warmed up. And then we'll do it for real. And real quick, before I actually start it up, I'm gonna show you the timing marks on here. So I'm gonna go grab a light real quick so we can see which marks you're trying to line up to. So let's, let's get All going. Right. So I went ahead and set up some external lighting here. Let's see if we can get lucky and focus in on the crankshaft pulley. Let's see, come on, focus, buddy. Yay, good on you, iPhone. All right, so this is our alignment mark that we're trying to line up to. So this pin that's sticking out from the oil pump case is what you're going to be lining up these little uh, marks for. So you'll see at the far left, you have, uh, I believe the way it goes is it's uh, 20 degrees advanced right here on the far right. It's 15 degrees second from the right, and then 10, 5, 0, negative 5. So it'll be retarded back here, 5 degrees. So what you're aiming for is the 15 degree mark, which I already marked in silver for you. So you can see it's the second from the far right. So you, let me see if I can go ahead and zoom in there a little bit so you have a better view of this. Okay, there you go. So you see the far right, um, this far right one right here, that's not the one you want. You want this guy right here. So that's your 15 degree mark. Now, granted, if your car is tuned and you have uh, your tuner says that you need to set it to something different, then you listen to what they're saying and you tune it to that. But if you have a stock SR or you um, you have an ECU that's tuned and it's still, um, its base timing is still 15 degrees and that's that silver mark is what you're gonna go off of. So um, let's go ahead and get this thing set up and let me warm the car up real quick. That way we can go through the whole process of doing it. Would you just listen to her purr? So yeah, this thing is definitely off timing. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get that fixed once it warms up. So this is cold start, just letting it do its thing right now. Um, I'm probably gonna move over to a voiceover setup just because this is probably gonna be hard on the microphone to differentiate which noise it wants to pick up. So if I swap, that's why. All right, so we're just at about operating temperature. Thing looks all right right now. Car's not shaking or doing anything weird, so we're probably not far off. Um, how the heck I'm gonna figure out how I'm gonna show you guys this, if I'm gonna do it one-handed, or if I'm gonna set it up on the tripod, I'm not really sure. I'm, and I'm quite not sure how I'm gonna set up audio. I don't know how this thing's gonna handle it. I tried to test and it sounds like you can hear me, but then, you know, when you upload it to YouTube, things change, so we'll see. All right, so let me go ahead and try to show you what's going on here. party in here. So there you see the silver mark. So if you look and you see that silver mark and that um, that pin sticking out, they should be lined up. I think you can actually see it. And then if you rotate the cast, that'll adjust where that marks out. Now, it sounds like I have a misfire somewhere, so timing's not my issue right now but I can clearly see that I'm at about 14 degrees of timing, and that's correct. So I need to figure out what other issues I have, but this is how you check timing. So yeah, you would just loosen up these 12 millimeter bolts, and you rotate this clockwise or counterclockwise, like how you did with the TPS, and it'll advance and retard the engine, allowing you to line up that little spot with those indentations. So I definitely have to figure out what's going on with my particular engine, but I'm gonna go ahead and plug TPS back in. Because I'm not really quite sure why I have a misfire right now. I didn't have one earlier, and now I'm kinda like, well, um, I haven't really quite sorted this car out just yet. Yeah, so number two cylinder, um, the spark plug was fouled out. Um, I'm gonna chase that down real quick. I think it might be the injector, I'm not sure. 
But uh, yeah, all the other cylinders were good to go. Um, spark plugs look pretty darn good, but number two cylinder actually had a little bit of black on the spark plug and that's what was missing. Anyways, um, aside from all that, that doesn't really have anything to do with the throttle position sensor or the cast adjustment for base ignition timing. Um, so it, you know, obviously follow the steps that I showed you before. Uh, it would have been nice to have a totally optimal engine to show you guys so you know it's bulletproof, but I just got this car running and I'm still sorting out a few little things here and there with it. But the, the steps still don't change. Um, it's all the same. Um, I just have to sort out my car. I mean, literally, I've, I have less than um, about, I would say, 30 minutes of runtime on this brand new built engine. So there's a few little things that I still have to get sorted out. And I was letting this car get up to operating temperature for you um, and nothing was adjusted or set because obviously I was showing you as I was going through it. So um, anywho, um, yeah, that's so that was kind of going on with the misfire thing. But other than that, like I said before, Steps didn't change, should be good to go. Now you know how to set your timing. Now you know how to set your, um, well, excuse me. You know how to set your ignition timing with the cam angle sensor and uh, set your voltage for the throttle position sensor. All right, so hopefully this video was helpful for you. Uh, as always, uh, I wanna try to do the best I can to give you the best content so that way you can get back on the road and start uh, driving, racing, whatever it is that you do. So uh, if you enjoyed the video, awesome, like, leave a comment, tell me what you wanna see in the future. Uh, I would love to have your input on it and uh, if it's something that a lot of you guys want, then of course I'll make a video of it. So uh, till next time, cheers.